Uh, well, uh, thank you very, very much, Sonia, uh, for that introduction, for bringing us all together here. Um, and I do really want to thank Mayor Brown and the whole Brampton team for coming out in force on a Victoria Day Monday, um, opening up City Hall, being here, welcoming us. Um, and you see with me uh, my ministerial colleagues, Minister LeBlanc, Minister Varani, Minister Kara, um, my MP colleagues, um, and we're all here today because this is an issue that is touching the lives of far too many Canadians. It's an issue we take incredibly seriously. It's an issue that the federal government is working on closely with all levels of government, that law enforcement at all levels is working on, that we are really, really committed to acting on. Notre budget vise à donner une chance équitable à toutes les générations, en particulier aux jeunes. Veuillez à ce que les Canadiennes et les Canadiens se sentent en sécurité, quel que soit l'endroit où ils choisissent de vivre, de travailler et d'élever leur famille, fait partie intégrante de notre plan. In recent years, we have seen an overwhelming and frankly unacceptable increase in auto theft across the country and especially right here in Ontario in the GTA. Every single one of us as an MP has heard about this from our constituents and it is not acceptable. Auto theft hurts Canadians. It creates unnecessary costs by burdening people with higher insurance rates on top of the stress, the trauma of having your vehicle stolen, of having to replace it. And it makes Canadians feel unsafe in their communities. That is not okay. That is not fair. No one should have to worry about their means of getting to work, school, or the grocery store and having that car stolen from them. And that is why in the budget, we have put in place a robust plan to crack down on auto theft and to protect Canadians, to protect the people here in Brampton. Our Budget Implementation Act includes measures such as providing law enforcement and prosecutors with the tools they need to protect Canadians from having their cars stolen. Specifically, this includes more robust criminal offenses relating to auto theft and new restrictions on the possession and distribution of devices used to steal vehicles. This is about taking the tools away from people who are committing these crimes, making us unsafe. Cette mesure prévue dans notre budget s'ajoute à d'autres mesures que notre gouvernement a pris pour lutter contre le vol d'automobile cette année, comme le renforcement de la collaboration entre les autres gouvernements et les forces policières et l'essai de nouvelles technologies pour détecter et fouler les conteneurs pour des véhicules volés. Our government is acting now and acting with purpose to ensure Canadians feel safe and protected in their communities, on the road, in their neighborhoods, in their homes. Because safer communities, communities where families want to live, where entrepreneurs want to set up shop, and where people are investing with confidence in their future. These are the keys to ensuring fairness for every generation. Alors, merci beaucoup, et je cède maintenant la parole à mon cher collègue, le ministre Dominic LeBlanc. Dom?
Christy, uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, a special thanks again to my friend Patrick Brown, the mayor uh, of Brampton, and the members of City Council who are hosting us on a holiday Monday on Victoria Day, but more importantly have joined us for this uh, press conference uh, and who continue to work alongside us uh, in a shared objective of cracking down on auto theft. So Patrick, thank you for your leadership and thank you for having us today. I'm very happy to be here with my uh, colleagues in the caucus and the cabinet uh, and uh, particularly with two uh, senior officials with whom I work closely, the Commissioner of the RCMP, Mike Duhem, who's with us this morning, and the Vice President, Mr. McCrory of the Canadian Border Services Agency involved in a lot of the intelligence work essential uh, both to the CBSA uh, and to our police partners, including the RCMP. Um, as Christia said, over the last number of months, our government in partnership with our law enforcement agencies on the federal side has redoubled our efforts to combat the growing and concerning issue of auto theft. Across Ontario, and especially here in the Greater Toronto Area, residents have become all too acquainted with this issue. And as the Deputy Prime Minister said, all of us hear about this from our friends uh, in the region, from uh, constituents of my colleagues who represent the region. Um, all too many people are acquainted with this issue because either they or somebody they know have had their car stolen in recent years and in some cases even more than once. Not only does auto theft undercut public safety, increasingly it's becoming a source of revenue for organized crime itself. To effectively combat it, we need everybody to come to the table and work together with practical solutions, and that's exactly what is happening. C'est pourquoi, en février dernier, nous avons organisé un sommet national sur le vol de véhicules qui a réuni des représentants des gouvernements et des forces de l'ordre au niveau local, provincial et fédéral, ainsi que des représentants aussi de l'industrie. Depuis le sommet, des organismes d'application de la loi ont procédé à la tenue de plusieurs opérations conjointes qui ont mené à la saisie de centaines et maintenant au-delà de 1200 véhicules cette année et nous voulons poursuivre cette lancée davantage. We want to build on the joint enforcement actions that have taken place since the National Summit on Combating Auto Theft and to that end, with my colleagues, I'm pleased to unveil our new national action plan on combating auto theft. The plan focuses on three areas in distinct federal jurisdiction. Firstly, and my colleague Arif will talk about this, we will introduce new legislative and regulatory changes that will include tougher penalties for auto theft under the criminal code and strict regulation of devices that are used in the theft of vehicles. Secondly, we will enhance intelligence and information sharing between governments, law enforcement agencies, and international police and customs officials. This will allow us to identify stolen vehicles more quickly at our ports and at rail yards, including the intermodal terminal here in the city of Brampton, and this obviously before the vehicles can be sent abroad. Thirdly, we will strengthen cooperation between police, border officials, border security officials, and the port, rail, and shipping industries. This will allow more containers to be examined and will include the use of more innovative detection technologies. We're buying, for example, new scanners, leading edge technologies we're redeploying other existing scanners uh, to ensure that we have the utmost collaboration between the Canada Border Services Agency and regional, provincial, and of course national uh, police partners as well. I know that for Mayor Brown and for his council and for my colleagues from this area, uh, we've had many conversations about how we can quickly 
deploy this scanner technology to the intermodal uh, facilities. You can imagine if we can intercept the stolen vehicle here in Brampton, for example, at a rail yard, it's more effective, less expensive, and from a law enforcement perspective, much more efficient than doing that at the Port of Montreal before it's loaded on a ship to be exported. Le Canada n'est pas le seul pays à constater une augmentation du nombre de vols de véhicules. C'est de plus en plus un crime transnational qui requiert une collaboration internationale et intergouvernementale. Et je salue ici le travail extraordinaire du commissaire Duhem et les membres de la GRC sur la scène internationale avec des organismes policiers à travers le monde. Et nous avons tous un rôle à jouer en identifiant des solutions. The successful implementation of our plan will require continued collaboration between provincial officials, municipal officials, police partners uh, across the country. And I want to also salute the important work and partnership with the Solicitor General of Ontario, Michael Kersner, with whom I'm in regular conversations in this regard. And obviously, Premier Ford and his government are a valuable partner with their police forces uh, for their municipal uh, partners and for the Government of Canada. I wanted to acknowledge their partnership and the continued work we do together. It's by working together we'll have the greatest impact, and I know that all of us are deeply committed to ensuring that Canadians understandably feel safe in their communities and in their homes. So I look forward to continuing work with Mayor Brown, with mayors from the Greater Toronto Area with provincial authorities and police authorities as we continue uh, to strengthen and deepen the work we're doing together. And to talk about that, I'm very happy to now turn it over to my friend and colleague, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General for Canada, uh, Arif Varani. Arif. Thank you very much, Dominic. Merci beaucoup. Uh, tout d'abord, j'aimerais juste uh, féliciter uh, le Deputy Prime Minister, Minister Kara, uh, Dominic, and uh, Mayor Brown. Thank you for hosting us here with so many of your colleagues. It is really quite impressive to see the dedication and the leadership you were showing at the local level uh, in terms of tackling this important problem. I want to pick up where Dominic left off. Uh, some of you may have been in the room at that very long press conference we had after the National Auto Summit uh, in February. There were a lot of questions about where do we go from here, what's next, how, how are we working, how fast can we work. And I'll, I'll tell you quite directly that to move from a national auto summit to, again, legislative changes and more financing and more dedication to this cause in a matter of a few short months is really quite a remarkable pace. But that shows you the dedication and the importance upon which we place on this issue. And I want to highlight another important point because some people sort of compartmentalize things in their heads and generally speaking. And this is not just about auto theft. When Dominic talks about the fact that it's auto theft that is orchestrated not by a one-off joyride type of situation, but is orchestrated by organized crime, they're doing this because it's profitable. And it's profitable because it feeds into other criminal components. So think about arms, think about prostitution, think about drug trades. So when you actually tackle this piece and you cut off the financing of it, you're actually addressing a whole series of criminal behaviors that are affecting Canadians all of the time. And Dominic and I, our chief role, our entire cabinet's role, and the government's role is about keeping Canadians safe in their communities and restoring their sense of safety. That is really, really critical. This is also not just a GTA issue. I, yes, am a Toronto MP. Christia to my left is a Toronto MP. Kamal to her left is a GTA MP. But this extends much broader than just the GTA or Montreal. I've literally heard about this from coast to coast to coast, and we are addressing this on, with the national urgency that it deserves. So what are we talking about? We're talking about changes that are in directly in our government's purview, directly in my purview, with respect to the criminal code. We are adding new offenses targeting auto theft and its links to violence and to organized crime. There are new offenses for the possession and distribution of a device used for committing auto theft, such as key programming machines. We're also proposing a new offense that targets the ringleaders of most auto thefts, which is, as I mentioned, organized crime. And the reason why this is attractive to organized criminals is because they can not only 
sell these vehicles abroad or domestically, but they can actually then use that money for their nefarious purposes. That means you need to attack where the money is going, which means tackling money laundering. We are proposing a new offense that will target those who launder the proceeds of crime at the direction of organized crime or in association with a criminal organization. Those measures will help in the fight not just against organized crime, but terrorist organizations as well. They will allow courts to do things like issue an order to require a person to keep an account open to assist in the investigation of a suspected criminal offense. So, so that may sound counterintuitive at first blush, but let me walk you through it. Right now, banks often unilaterally close an account when they suspect criminal activity. This can hinder police investigations. We've got the head of the RCMP standing right behind me. We've been in constant touch with folks like the RCMP and police of jurisdiction, and they've told us that their investigations need to follow the money path. That's what we are doing with these targeted changes by targeting that particular issue. We're also doing more. Courts would be allowed to issue a production order for multiple specified dates through what's called a repeat production order. That would enable law enforcement to require someone to produce specified information to support an investigation into a criminal offense on multiple predetermined dates over a set period of time. <coughs> Again, that will help law enforcement trace the monetary path. The last thing I will mention is that what this means to me as a father. I'm a father of two young boys, and we know that there's been a lot of talk about youngsters being involved in this criminality. But what I think is really critical is thinking about who is directing those youngsters? Who's directing that teenager? Who's orchestrating and providing the resources for that teenager? The, co the key issue here is targeting the root causes of the criminal behavior. So what we're proposing through this legislation is a new aggravated factor at sentencing. It would be applied to an adult offender who, apply, who involves a young person in the commission of the crime. Our goal is to get at the root cause of the crime. The root cause is not the actual teenager doing the theft. The root cause is the adult criminal, criminal who is leading them or in fact forcing them to do that crime. And lastly, I'll finish where Dominic uh, left off as well, which is that Canadians expect all of us to work together to come up to, with a real plan to deal with auto thefts. What I'd say to you is that some of these money laundering provisions that I'm talking about are in the current Budget Implementation Act. That is before Parliament right now. Other provisions <coughs> date back to the fall economic statement that we literally tabled last fall. Neither of those two have seen the light of day yet. We believe on an issue as critical as this, as keeping Canadians safe, this must be a non partisan issue. That means all parties, including His Majesty's official opposition, getting behind the action, leaving behind the talk, and getting behind the action that will keep our communities safe. Stopping the money laundering helps us do exactly that. We hope all parties will get behind these initiatives. On that note, I will turn this over to Minister Kara. Thank you, Kamala. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Minister, uh, Minister Virani. And let me also just begin by thanking all of our colleagues for uh, being here this morning, particularly uh, Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland, Minister LeBlanc, uh, and of course, all the colleagues that you see behind us. This really is, uh, you can imagine how important this issue is for all of us uh, in this community and in the GTA. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge, of course, uh, Mayor Brown, the members of the council, as well as all the heads of agencies that you see behind us uh, that, are, that are here today. I think here in Brampton and in the GTA, I think we all know particularly well the impact that auto theft can have on our families and our community. We also know that this is a very serious issue and residents here in our community and Canadians right across this country expect serious results. And that is why we are stepping up, showing leadership as we take a Team Canada approach, working alongside all orders of government, federal, provincial, and municipal, along with the police, the auto industry, the insurance sector, and stakeholders to deliver real solutions. We also know, as has been mentioned by my colleague, that this is a complex issue. We also know auto theft isn't just property crime. As has been mentioned, it is a public safety issue. It involves well-organized criminal groups and gun violence. That requires a Team Canada effort. Only with strong coordination can we ensure better action on the ground to retrieve stolen vehicles, to arrest criminals involved, and while also tackling the broader problems of organized crime and gun violence. And that is exactly what we have been able to do over the last few months. You know, since holding the first ever National Summit on Combating Auto Theft in February, we have seen important progress already. 
We've seen the result of that stronger coordination with Project Volcano and Project Vector, which has already allowed authorities to recover thousands of stolen vehicles and arrested dozens of suspects over the last few weeks. And thanks to the immediate action that our government took, like our investment of $121 million to prevent gun and gang violence in Ontario, and the investment of $28 million to, for CBSA, our agencies are better equipped to prevent and to detect auto theft. But we all recognize there's a lot more to do. Let us be clear, we won't back down. Quite simply, we will not stop until organized crime groups involved in auto theft are held accountable. This National Action Plan on Combating Auto Theft is about doubling down on our federal efforts to fight criminals, using everything at our disposal to crack down on auto theft, from, tough, from tougher penalties and better data sharing, to more resources on the ground to open containers and to, retrieved, to retrieve stolen vehicles. I think we all recognize that the goal is to make sure that our community members here in Brampton and in the GTA and Canadians from coast to coast to coast can feel safe in their homes, in their streets, and in their neighborhoods. And that's exactly this team right behind you is committed to do, and that's exactly what we're delivering on today. Thank you, and with that, let me hand it over to someone that is no stranger to our community in Brampton, someone that has actually taken a, you know, a leadership role in working alongside our government, and that's what happens when we work together to deliver real results uh, for our communities. Uh, allow me to introduce uh, His Worship, Mayor Patrick Brown. Well, thank you, Kamal, and I want to say, first of all, thank you to the federal government for this announcement uh, today about help uh, being on the way to combat uh, auto theft. This is the issue that I hear most about. It's public safety here in the GTA. It's auto thefts that have become more harrowing and terrorizing than ever before. It's not just someone's car being stolen in the middle of the night. It's now brazen, violent carjackings, doors being knocked down through an increase in break and enters. Um, and our residents are are concerned. It's why I'm sure some people are tired of me talking about auto thefts, um, but it's what we've been hearing about for the last few years. You know, one of our most famous residents, the late former Premier Bill Davis, who lived probably two blocks from right here, used to always tell me, don't criticize proposed solutions. Uh, it doesn't matter party affiliation or level of government, what residents expect is for everyone, everyone to work together. Um, and what was so encouraging, you know, when Minister LeBlanc became the Minister of Public Safety, um, and I know from his days in, when I was in Ottawa, um, and just such a collaborative uh, approach. Um, I have to say it's been really refreshing um, how you've really seized yourself of this file, um, and it, this is something that was desperately uh, needed. You know, our Peel Police described the issue as uh, high reward, low risk, and I believe what is being announced today <coughs> is about rebalancing that, about making sure that organized crime isn't more sophisticated um, than law enforcement, that organized crime isn't more co coordinated than law enforcement. Uh, what the Peel police have been pushing for, and I've been trying to echo, is to make sure police have jurisdiction, that we've got the most sophisticated scanning technology available um, to really change the odds in favor of public safety. And I have to say, you know, Minister Brownie, um, Minister LeBlanc listened to every stakeholder around the country when they held that auto theft summit. I've been back to Ottawa a few times to, to speak to them about it. Um, and I think doing your homework, doing your research um, is led us to where we are today where there's um, an action plan being announced that is going to give police those additional tools, that is going to embrace new technology. Um, and here you are on a long weekend where you could be many other places uh, here to help our residents. So, uh, for that, I want to say, I want to say thank you. Um, this is something that is so critical to give uh, residents in Brampton and frankly across the GTA um, peace of mind. Um, and, and these tools, these tools are going to be disappointing for organized crime in this country. You know, in 2022, this was a gift of 1.2 billion to organized crime. Um, taking that away, as Minister Verani has said, will not only help just with the reduction of auto thefts, but so many other areas of crime where they've used these funds um, to, to flourish. And so um, thank you on behalf of members of council. I know we've got 
uh, our Deputy Mayor Harkirat Singh, Regional Councilor <coughs> Tor Power Vasante here today, uh, Mississauga Councilor Martin Reed, who knows this issue very well as well. Thank you for being at the table. Thank you for listening. And thank you for arming our law enforcement with additional tools to make sure um, that public safety wins, not organized crime. This is uh, very encouraging news on a holiday Monday um, that the game is changing. The organized crime is now going to be put um, on the returning end of making sure um, that our, our, our police have the tools uh, to do the job and keep us safe. Thank you, Minister LeBlanc. Thank you, Minister Verani. Thank you, Minister Kara and Deputy Prime Minister Freeland. I think we're now ready to answer questions, and Jesse, I think, is going to lead yes. that. Uh, so it'll be one question, one follow-up, and we'll ask you to please state your name and media outlet before asking your question using the microphone I have here. If you could please line up uh, if you would like to ask one. Yeah. And, and you have a bunch of uh, elected officials and senior law enforcement leaders here, so if you want to address a question to a particular person, feel free to do that. <coughs> Good morning, Courtney Gills with CP24. I wanted to know a little bit more about the details for the CBSA officials scanning these shipping containers to ensure stolen vehicles aren't going out. I'm not sure who can speak to this, but what will that look like? So uh, thank you for the question, and uh, perhaps uh, I'll ask the Vice President of CBSA to add a few more details. Um, we've heard from our colleagues with me here today and from people like Mayor Brown and others the importance of disrupting uh, the movement of stolen vehicles if they're at intermodal rail lines and containers, for example, like the one here or others in the GTA. It's a lot more efficient and less expensive to retrieve those vehicles here than at a crowded port in another province in Montreal. Um, to be able to do that, we need the most efficient and effective technology scanners. Some are mobile, some are more fixed. Uh, we have CBSA officials <clears throat> looking in New Zealand and other Five Eyes partner countries, acquiring additional technologies. We're in the process of redeploying uh, scanners that are currently focused on some importation of goods to be able to work in the intermodal yard here in Brampton and other yards in the GTA to look at potential exports. Uh, we're going to be introducing changes to federal legislation to give the CBSA authorities uh, to uh, oblige rail carriers, trucking companies, for example, um, to accommodate their scanners for export of goods and not only the current mandate for the importation. We gave $28 million, the Minister of Finance did, to the CBSA to acquire these additional technologies and to redeploy and train staff to do some. Uh, we understand the urgency of it um, and the good news is there are more scanners and more staff uh, quickly being put into position here in the GTA and other spots to disrupt this activity. But I don't know, do you want to add something, Aaron? I think, Minister, you, you covered it much better than I probably will, but yeah, technology has always been a part of the arsenal that we use at the CBSA to interdict historically primarily the import of, of, of contraband goods. But we are now looking at how we can use that for the export of contraband goods, working with both CN Rail and the Canadian Pacific Kansas City Railway in terms of how we can deploy them here in Toronto area, area rail yards. But I'd also say we're not waiting until that technology is deployed. As I said, we've always used it as part of our arsenal, but it's not the only thing we've done. So for example, we've already deployed resources being intelligence driven to seize vehicles, uh, over 1,200 vehicles so far this year, both in uh, ports and also in the Toronto area rail yard. So in Toronto this year, about 440 so far, compared to about 680 at the Port of Montreal. So we're, we're already generating success and we expect to do more once we can deploy some of the technology. Thank you. My next question is for the Justice Minister. Um, you're also announcing more criminal offences and changes to the criminal code. What will those changes be? What will see Canadians see right now? So the changes that are being proposed for the Criminal Code of Canada relate to the maximum penalties for things like, such as usage of violence and the involvement of organized criminality, organized crime entities in the involvement of an offense and taking the maximum penalties up to a, to a maximum of 14 years. I think what's really, really important is that you heard Patrick Brown mentioning this. We're seeing what used to be sort of in the dead of night uh, transgressions turning into daytime transgressions. Uh, live in interdictions of a car, a carjacking, etc., use of violence, use of weapons. 
that is very significant and very concerning. What we're also proposing is that when your people are actively deploying children or people aged 12 to 17 in the commission of these kinds of offenses, that be treated as an aggravated factor on sentencing, which allows for a higher sentence. But the other key piece that I'll return to is that money laundering piece, which is that if you break down the money and the flow of that money, what you do is you make this less lucrative for those organized crime entities. That is really, really important in terms of getting at the heart of this issue. And the other thing I would say is that we need to really be working at, on this from a multi-jurisdictional perspective because we know the statistics that, that Dominic LeBlanc has vary between 60 and 80 percent for an export market, but that means 20 to 40 percent of these cars are being sold right here in this province or in other parts of Canada through things like revinning, etc. That's why our collaboration with the province is critical and our collaboration with the municipalities like uh, Mayor Brown and his team of, of councillors that are here behind us is really, really critical because local law enforcement has to be that first piece. So I'll return to that 121 million that Kamal Kara mentioned. That is a significant investment in terms of keeping people safe in their local neighbourhoods. We're looking at this from every front. There's little pieces that we still weren't even able to mention today about amendments to the Radio Communications Act, about the actual devices that are used to make a, a, a car theft easier. So we're trying to apply this on every front. That's what we learned at that National Auto Summit. And here we are implementing those changes quite rapidly, including through those criminal code amendments. Merci. Next question. Uh, Dale Manukduk, CBC News. This is for uh, Minister LeBlanc. This is kind of a follow-up, but can you tell us uh, what is the government doing to increase staffing for CBSA, specifically at these ports um, that are uh, problematic? Um, so, uh, and thank you. Your question is a good one because we've heard from our law enforcement partners uh, across the country about the good work that the CBSA is doing, and the CBSA's mandate has traditionally been, obviously, as the Vice President said, to interdict incoming contraband. You can think of drugs, you can think of guns, you can think of uh, some of the work that they do at airports and ports and uh, postal uh, stations across the country every day. Uh, but we've had to shift the focus now to interdict, as my colleagues have said, uh, the export of stolen vehicles. Um, so we've hired more CBSA officers. We've deployed uh, CBSA officers that had been uh, working on other uh, projects to these intermodal rail yards, to the Port of Montreal, and other uh, port facilities. Um, one of the things we've done is invest in the intelligence capacity. One, I've heard this from the Commissioner of the RCMP, but other law enforcement leaders, including the Chief in Peel Region, for example. One of the best things we can do is share intelligence about the organized criminal activities, which trucking companies are moving in what containers, uh, stolen vehicles. It's much more efficient for the CBSA to have this intelligence information from police partners. So you have joint task forces where the CBSA, local and provincial police are embedded together, sharing this information in real time, and then disrupting uh, these, these containers as they arrive either at an intermodal rail terminal or, uh, or a port. Um, the more we can invest in intelligence, but just having additional border services officers. One of the things we're looking at, we focused on technologies and scanners, but one of the most efficient ways, again, based on this intelligence information, may be to have a CBSA officer actually open the back of a container, uh, open quickly, look in the container, and then close it, um, is one of the things uh, that can be done in companionship with uh, some of the scanners, uh, but it's about deploying those resources, and that's exactly what we're doing, including hiring more officers. And for whoever is best to answer, what else is the government looking at in terms of combating auto theft? We've heard a lot of measures today, but perhaps anything uh, legislating vehicle manufacturers or the rebinning of stolen vehicles, some of those other issues we've heard of. Well, so in terms of the legislative pieces that I mentioned, so there's criminal code amendments, there's amendments to financial instruments that deal with money laundering and tracking the money trail. There's an amendment that relates to the Radio Communications Act, which governs over the actual devices that are being used. But what's really critical is what we heard about at that National Auto Summit is that we, and we had at that auto summit, the insurance sector there, we were talking about transport and the investments in the Port Authority. Uh, as Dominic had just mentioned, I investments in Interpol are really, really critical. And what we're seeing is that already those investments are starting to bear fruit. Uh, more needs to be done, clearly. That's why we're here today. But we've already seen literally in the hundreds interceptions that are being made at the port, and we're trying to move that process along earlier. 
but I'll return to that classic piece about sort of that, that cooperation that, that is needed. You know, we've heard, uh, f for example, suggestions at the provincial level about the consequences of a conviction on a first offense, a multiple offense, and how that relates to your civil ability to continue driving. We're looking for solutions on all fronts at every level to try and address this because it needs to be multifaceted. At the end of the day, Minister Anand was there also and she, she's a representative of the Oakville region. She talked about affordability. And if there's one thing hopefully you've heard over the past six, eight weeks about our budget, we are targeting certain things such as the cost of living. We know that affordability is part of that. Auto insurance is feeding into that affordability. If we can tackle this through our legislative measures, such as the ones I mentioned, we're confident that hopefully that has an impact on the level of thefts coming down, and that has an impact on, upon people's pocketbooks in terms of their insurance rates. Let's see. And I'm just going to say it might be um, good for us all to hear from the commissioner of the RCMP who's here with us. Thank you, Minister. Just to add to, to your question as to what more can be done, uh, the RCMP federal policing is embedded to Mr. LeBlanc's comments earlier where we have these joint teams, uh, Project Vector here in Ontario, Project uh, Recherche in the province of Quebec in which the RCMP has individuals embedded into those teams. So that promotes the sharing of information and there's just a better cohesion in the flow of information of what's going on in, in the auto theft. But I want to share with you on the international side, uh, when we had the symposium in Ottawa, uh, I shared that we were looking at connecting a CPIC database, which is Canadian Police Information Centre database, with Interpol's database, and we've done that uh, late February, and we were able to download 151, 141,000 entries. So now you're not just seeing law enforcement in North America querying stolen vehicles; you're actually seeing 52 countries around the world that are part of uh, Interpol. Actually, there's more than that that are actually querying it. And so far, we've had since uh, May 16th, or I should say from February 13th to May 16th, we've had uh, 1,553 alerts. That means that there's another law, law enforcement agency in the world that's queried some of the data that's actually in it. And then that, that brings up a second portion where there's 250 follow-ups that were made to request for that information. So it's a, it's a, it's a global effort here. It's not, just, uh, it's not just nationally here, what we're seeing here in Ontario and Quebec, but it's, you're seeing an international effort to combat it. This is uh, Nitin Chopra from Prime Asia TV, and uh, uh, Justice Minister and uh, Public Safety Minister can answer that. Um, this any announcement towards combating auto theft is a welcoming step by the government and in last so many years so much of damage has already been done and who is accountable for that and what is the damage canadians wanted to see the changes in the criminal code in the last five years they wanted to see the effective bail reforms so that criminals were behind the bars we had seen recent highway 401 crash we had one three years baby and grandparents they died and those suspects were out on the bail um, same things we are seeing now also. Scanners, in the budget is mentioned that over the next three to five years we'll get the scanners. Why don't we get the scanners in last three to four years? And uh, uh, loss to Canadian taxpayers is approximately one billion every year. If we calculate last five years, it's a five billion of dollars loss. 50,000 of insurance claims. And there's a taxpayer's money. And uh, then we give uh, 15 billion to other countries also. So 20 billion, we could not have uh, improve our healthcare system where emergencies wait time is five to six hours. Thank you. So thank you for those questions. There's a lot in there. Let me start with bail reform. So with respect to bail, we've been attentive to this issue, very attentive to this issue. And on bail, we worked very collaboratively with every single provincial government in this country, every single territorial government in this country, as well as law enforcement right around the country. That resulted in a bill called C-48, and we were able to secure passage of that bill this fall, and it's already been given royal assent and come into, come into force. How does that connect to this issue? Things like serious, violent, repeat offenders now have a reverse onus on bail. So instead of being presumed that they're entitled to bail, they it is presumed that they are not entitled to bail, and they have to convince a justice of the peace otherwise. That's significant reform. What I'd say to you here is that in, on that bail piece, that took about one year to get, maybe about six to eight months to get to the point of tabling legislation, and one year to get it passed. Now you've got a February auto summit, and we're in May in three months' time, and we're already proposing further surgical amendments to the criminal code. That's very, very important in terms of increasing the maximum penalties. 
with respect to, I think you finished on uh, health care reform, and I think all of these things are not mutually exclusive. And what I would say to, to you with respect to health care reform is that we've heard loudly and clearly about, uh, from Canadians about health care and our health system needs. That's not just a Brampton issue, that's a national issue. But I would also say to you it's about 15 months ago we struck a almost $200 billion accord on health care with the various provinces and territories around this country, the lion's share of which comes to the most populous province, which is the province we're standing in right now. So we stand shoulder to shoulder with the health care needs of Canadians, and I'll allow Dominic to address some of the other points he made. Merci beaucoup. So, th thank you, Arif. <laughs> Just very quickly, on, we take the point on the urgency of the scanners. I'm not an expert, and if perhaps after, if you want details on the different technologies, I'm sure the CBSA Vice President can provide that information, but we are actively procuring the scanners now, additional scanners. The Minister of Finance added uh, significant investments before the auto summit in February, so before the budget. Um, CBSA is doing that. I just uh, said to the mayor, uh, to Mayor Brown, when we met in Ottawa, um, we're hoping to redeploy existing scanners um, in the next few weeks. I don't want to pick a particular date in case these, you can't buy these things on Amazon and just tow them behind in a Ford F-150. Uh, I'm told that the larger scanners, you need the Nuclear Safety Commission to give you permission to move them down the 401. So the, this is a significant undertaking. Uh, the good news is we're very much on it, and I'm hoping uh, to be back uh, in this community in the coming weeks uh, to identify examples of those scanners that will be in place very quickly, and more are on the way as quickly as we can possibly procure them. I just want to say one more thing. Um, I just want to say one more thing. So you see a lot of us here today, um, a lot of federal MPs and ministers, a lot of elected officials um, from Brampton, from Mississauga. You see some of our senior law enforcement leaders here. We're here on Victoria Day because we take this issue extremely seriously, we know the challenge is real and urgent. And the reality is we have a plan with specific tough measures. Many of them require actual legislation. They require changes to the laws we have on the books. We have put forward that legislation and now it needs to be passed. And it can sometimes feel like parliamentary maneuvers that you see in Ottawa are just about political games and they don't affect, you know, an ordinary person just living their regular life in their community, in a beautiful community like Brampton. But that's not true. We need these measures to be passed and the games that we see being played at parliamentary committees and in the House of Commons, ongoing endless filibusters that mean it is taking far, far too long for urgent measures like this to be passed, that is hurting the lives of Canadians and it is the Conservatives who are doing this. So I think everyone here agrees that auto theft is an urgent problem and challenge I hope everyone in Canada would agree that it is. And, you know, let's put the partisan games aside. Let's give our law enforcement and our border officials the tools, the legislative tools, the physical tools, the money that they need to do the job. Uh, follow up is for uh, Deputy PM. Um, Canadians pay highest taxes, and uh, this year alone, we have seen that payroll taxes up, alcohol tax up, carbon taxes there. Then we have the uh, capital gain taxes coming, as mentioned in the budget. And then the scams are there, because another crisis is the housing crisis, which you are tackling, government is tackling. And then we have a mortgage fraud. Simple solution, why can't we link CRA with lenders, as in US, so we can tackle that uh, mortgage fraud issue? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, for, thank you for the question, and there's a lot packed in there. Um, and I do want to say, um, on housing and mortgages, um, we take the safety and the security of Canadians when it comes to their financial institutions and their banking system 
extremely seriously, and our government has taken historic, unprecedented steps to strengthen the tools we have when it comes to oversight of financial institutions, when it comes to measures to prevent bad actors, to prevent money laundering. The Minister of Justice spoke about some of those. But to your broader question um, about affordability, um, let me just say, our budget is a plan for fairness for every generation. It is a budget that makes historic investments in housing. No federal government has invested in housing as significantly as our government, and that includes major investments in infrastructure that are gonna help municipalities like Brampton, are gonna help provinces like Ontario to build the infrastructure that we need to get more homes built faster. The budget includes major investments in affordability. Things like a national school food program starting in September. So kids, an additional 400,000 kids across Canada are going to get some healthy food in school so they're not studying hungry. Major investments in dental care. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians are benefiting from this. We are making prescription contraceptives and diabetes medicine free. These are measures that will make life more affordable for all Canadians. And then finally, really significant investments in our economy. Huge investments in the auto sector, and we are seeing that really working with historic foreign direct investment in Canada. Canada per capita last year had the highest level of foreign direct investment in the G7, and that was before the major announcements we have seen already this year. And we're doing all of that in a fiscally responsible way that brings more fairness to our tax system and actually means middle class Canadians, people working hard to join the middle class, are not going to have an unfair tax system. And what we are asking is for those who are benefiting the most, the people who are the most successful in our amazing country, and it's great that they're successful, asking them to contribute a little bit more so we can make these essential investments in everything from giving law enforcement the tools they need to fight auto theft, to helping Mayor Brown build the community infrastructure he needs to build more houses in Brampton. Thanks.